This is the news on PBCJ. I am Simone Absalom. The Kingston and St. Andrew Health Department has classified 29 areas in the capital city as being at high risk for a dengue outbreak. The information was provided in a report to yesterday's meeting of the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation's Parish Disaster Preparedness and Public Health Committee. The high-risk dengue com communities listed in the report are Olympic Gardens, New Haven, Winwood Road, August Town, Riverton City, Kalalu Muse, Cassava Peace, Maxfield, Bull Bay, Ligony, Bay Farm Road, Mountain View, Aki Walk, Standpipe, Gordon Town, Sandy Park, Majestic Gardens, Taylorland, Whitfield Town, Rock Hall, Swain Spring, Hope Flats, Belvedere, Salisbury Plain, Mosquito Valley, Mongoose Town, Shooters Hill, and Parks Road. The report said that the classification, not in risk order, was based on considerations that include the ADES index, number of cases presented and reported, and the population density of each community. According to the health department, the likely factors for increased mosquito breeding in the communities included poor piped water supply dependent on stored water, which is often stored improperly heavy vegetation in close proximity, acting as a harborage for the mosquitoes, rocky terrain fostering pooled water in rock craters after rainfall, informal communities or settlements, communities in proximity to gullies or drains, and poor refuse management. More than three quarters of the clients of the Heart Foundation of Jamaica are overweight and have abnormal blood pressure. This has prompted the organization to ramp up its sensitization programs in the lead up to the commemoration of Heart Month in February. Speaking at the launch of Heart Month at the Spanish Court Hotel in New Kingston on Tuesday, Executive Director of the HFJ, Deborah Chen, said that while the surveys from walk-ins at the organization's offices last year were not scientific, there was enough anecdotal evidence that Jamaica was on the cusp of a crisis. Pointing to the island-wide surveys, she said one in two Jamaicans are overweight and one in three Jamaicans have hypertension, one in eight have diabetes, and the numbers in children are increasing. And one sugary drink a day increases the likelihood of being overweight by 27% for adults and 52% for children. Ms. Chen said her team is very happy with the government's ban on sugary drinks in schools. That we 100% support the Ministry of Health restriction and Ministry of Education restriction of sugary beverages in schools because really, as you can see, this is not something good to be putting in our lunch pan. The foundation is pushing for flavored sugary drinks to be substituted with water or fruit-infused water in addition to nutritional proportioned meals. Civil Military Corporation and Media Officer for the Jamaica Defense Force, Major Basil Jarrett, believes partnerships with the regional allies are critical to boosting the country's national security framework. Speaking with the Gleaner on Tuesday at a joint defense and security seminar between the JDF and the United States-based National Defense University, and William J. Perry's Center of Hemispheric Defense Studies. Jared said that Jamaican forces cannot tackle narcotics and human trafficking on their own. The seminar, which will run until Thursday, will discuss a range of topics including human trafficking, illicit arms trafficking and violence, evolution of the illicit narcotics trade in Jamaica, and illicit finance and money laundering schemes. Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Chang called on Jamaicans to work together to build on the momentum gained in 2018. He told those gathered at the seminar, quote, We must move ahead with the commitment and fortitude that is required to create a society in which all Jamaicans can achieve their fullest potential. 
our economy must continue to expand and we will achieve our long-term development objectives. End quote. The minister said that a Jamaican society in which each citizen can live free from fear of crime and violence is within grasp. Dr. Chang noted that in 2018, several new approaches were tried, which resulted in Jamaica recording a 22% reduction in murders. He also cited the announcement made by Prime Minister Andrew Holness in his New Year message regarding the establishment of the National Commission on Violence. He was speaking Tuesday at a joint defense and security seminar between the JDF and the United States-based National Defense University. He added that the Prime Minister also indicated that the government will continue with its strategic implementation of Plan Secure Jamaica. Here's a clip of the Prime Minister's address. Our objective is to see a massive, sustained decrease in murders, bringing us to below the global homicide rate of six per 100,000. For most Jamaicans, having experienced murder rates as high as 10 times the global average for such a long time, this may seem incredulous. But Jamaica has the capacity to do it. We have proven what works. What we have learned from this last decade of crime fighting is that political unity around the proven measures and the financial commitment by the government are critical for successful and sustained outcomes. The government this year will intensify its outreach to the opposition to build political unity around the crime plan. We will also continue to make significant investments in the retooling, training, and capacity building of our security forces. The Manchester police are searching for members of a criminal gang in the parish who have threatened to carry out deadly attacks if their leader is not released by the police. The threats follow the arrest of the alleged leader of the Grey Ground Gang, Rohan Smiley, otherwise called Boomhead. Mr. Smiley was taken into custody on the weekend in relation to five murders committed in Manchester last month. Superintendent Wayne Cameron, head of the Manchester Police, says investigators have stepped up their presence in the Grey Ground community, which is the base of the criminal gang. He said investigators of the Counter-Terrorism and Organized Crime Investigations branch have been brought in to lead the probe. In regional news, Guyana's Prime Minister David Grange and Belize's Prime Minister Dean Barrow both met with Cuba's President Miguel Diaz-Canel recently, while the two were on non-official trips to Cuba. Richard Richards has the details. The President of Cuba, Miguel Diaz-Canel Bermudez, paid a special call to His Excellency Brigadier David Arthur Granger, President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, who is in Havana in a non-official visit. In a very cordial environment, both heads of states interchange about the positive state of their bilateral relations and coincided in the necessity of enhancing this relation with a permanent working will. International issues were also part of their conversations. Mr. Granger was accompanied by his ambassador to Cuba, Mr. Abdul Halim Mahid. The Cuban Chancellor Bruno Rodriguez also participated in the fraternal meeting between the two Caribbean presidents. Meanwhile, this conversation was taking place Friday last. Prime Minister of Belize, Dean Barrow, was leaving Cuban soil after a three days official visit to the island, where he was also received by Cuba's President Miguel Diaz Canel. Barrow was seen off at the Jose Marti International Airport by Anayansi Rodriguez. Deputy Minister of Foreign Relations. Excellent, first class. Yeah. Just before his departure, Mr. Barrow, in a short statement to the press, said that he had received an excellent and first class attention from the Cuban president and that his short visit to the island had been very fruitful in gaining knowledge of the last events that has been taking place in the region. He also said that he was very impressed with Diaz Canel due to his intelligence and knowledge of various situations and especially in terms of the next constitutional referendum which will be voted by all the Cuban people the coming 24th of February. Direct from Cuba, Richard Richards, Canal Caribe. 
Venezuela's government on Monday said it had suppressed a military revolt after a group of officers stole weapons and kidnapped several officials. As a video posted online showed a sergeant demanding the removal of President Nicolas Maduro. The government said some two dozen officers attacked a National Guard outpost in Caracas neighborhood of Cotiza, where they met firm resistance. Though the incident signals discontent within the armed forces, it appeared to involve only low-ranking officers. In sports, Reggae Girls assistant coach Lauren Donaldson has admitted that making the final squad to the World Cup will be highly competitive. Twelve uncapped players were called to the squad for a one-week training camp last week, joining the 32 players who helped Jamaica qualify for this summer's showpiece. According to RJR News, May 26 is the deadline for the submission of the final 23 to FIFA for the June 7 to July 7 event. Donaldson says the training squad is made up of talented women, making the coach's job of selecting the traveling team very challenging. The Reggae Girls will next play Chile on February 28 at the National Stadium and on March 3 at the Montego Bay Sports Complex. That's the news on PBCJ, the People's Station.